Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My son's affair with my girlfriend shattered our lives. Now, I'm struggling to find a path to forgiveness. I'm 37M and my son, 21M, slept with my girlfriend, 32. I don't know how to process this level of betrayal. I apologize in advance if this isn't the most coherent thing in the world. This is partially just me venting into the void. About four years ago, I lost my wife, the mother of my son, to lung cancer. We had been together since we were 14. It was the darkest time of my life. I pushed on for my son, and because my wife made me promise to make the most of life, we had our son pretty young. I worked two jobs to keep us afloat and was thankfully able to provide a decent upbringing until he moved out at 16, although I still paid, and continued to do so until this happened, a portion of his bills. The loss was extremely hard on my son as well. He came back to stay with me for a while and we'd work through the grief together every day. I got him into therapy, pushed him to get involved in things to keep his mind busy, and when he moved back into his apartment, I'd call every night to check on him and visited multiple times a week. We were always extremely close. My wife told me outright after her diagnosis that she didn't want me to be alone, so I made myself available. My girlfriend and I met about two years ago and hit it off. She wasn't my wife but I loved her for who she was, and we really connected. I was reluctant to introduce her to my son because I was afraid he'd feel I was betraying his mother, so I held off for the first year which I regretted, as they ended up getting along very well. We'd hang out together. My son was happy, I was happy. She moved in with me about five months ago, this past Thursday. He was over for dinner and movies. We've had this little game since he was a teenager where I'd pop up over his shoulder when he was on his phone in common areas and say, stop looking at that in an accusing way to mess with him, even though he was never actually looking at anything. Turns out, this time he was doing something, and I saw topless photos on his phone. I recognized the photos as being of my girlfriend's same tattoo placement between the breasts. I grabbed the phone from him, and he immediately started pleading his case. I went into the gallery, and there were easily two dozen photos of my girlfriend, some of him, I'm assuming he sent to her and one or two of them together. By this time, he's crying and trying to grab the phone back. I checked his texts, and he has two weeks worth of conversations with her, under a different name, detailing the fact they'd been fooling around behind my back. My girlfriend was in the room, begging to know what was going on. I'm not proud of the fact that I lost myself. I screamed at them both. I smashed the phone. Yes, I know this is unacceptable. Yes, I'm in therapy. Yes, it's the first time I got aggressive with either of them. I demanded details. My son kept apologizing, saying he didn't know why and that it had only started two weeks ago. They'd slept together three times. My girlfriend was sobbing and kept trying to hug me, telling me it was a mistake, purely physical, and that she'd never speak to him again. I screamed at my son that I'd given my life to him, that he knew what this meant to me, that he was all I had left. I pulled him upstairs, gave him the money for his phone, and kicked him out. I went upstairs to our bedroom, turned her drawers upside down, and packed her clothes into two travel bags while she kept asking me to listen. I put them outside, guided her through the door and told her she could have someone else get the rest of her belongings this week. Both of them kept texting me non-stop until last night, at which point I blocked their numbers. I feel completely detached. The fact that after two years my girlfriend, knowing my history, could betray me is painful enough, and absolutely nothing will make me forgive her. She refuses to get her stuff until I talk to her, so I'm having a friend drop it off to her. The fact my son, whom I dropped everything for, worked non-stop to provide for, and who was all I had left in this world, could do this to me, knowing what it would do, is another pain entirely. It feels like I lost another family member. I ache for my wife all over again. I know everyone processes grief differently, but this was two years after her passing. He had a girlfriend, and I was there for him, as were therapists, every step of the way, so I have a hard time believing grief is the cause of his decision. I can't see this as a mistake. He didn't trip and fall. It was a conscious choice to betray someone who loved him. I want to honor my wife by giving my son a chance to hold on to the little family I have left. But this isn't like he stole money from me. It isn't even something that happened once while drunk. He was there for that grief with me. He knew how hard it was for me to move on. Of all the women, he chose mine. All the apologies or future efforts kind of erase that fact or the memory of it. I never did wrong by him, and now I feel like the kid I raised isn't there anymore. Thanks to friends, I'm not drifting into thoughts of self-harm again but I don't know if I have it in me to ever forgive him. If and when that day comes, what steps can I take to process what happened, talk to him without feeling disgust, and open the door to trusting him again? And if that day never comes, does that make me a bad person? Edit, some brief clarification since people on the other relationship sub took this and ran with it. One nothing caused him to move out, he asked and said it'd be cool, and I helped pay his bills. No hidden resentment I've ever been aware of. Two yes, Popping up over his shoulder sometimes was something we both found funny. No, I wasn't actually trying to invade his privacy. Yes, he was a part of the joke. Three, yes, I know I was aggressive. I paid for the phone, and we'll be discussing it in therapy. Four, yes, I know this sounds like something out of a movie. It's not. Update, first off, I'd like to thank everyone for the enormous outpouring of support. I've had numerous people offering their well wishes privately, 
and such compassion from those who commented. I believe it was this support, as well as that from my friends that kept me from doing anything stupid. I'll try to keep this as concise and short-sentenced as possible. It's been a busy couple of days, to say the least. I unblocked both their numbers shortly after posting. My now ex called again that night, which I answered. I told her if she wasn't calling to make plans to pick up her stuff, I was hanging up, and we decided on the next morning. I called a platonic female friend of mine that night, and she agreed to be at my place before my ex showed up as a witness. I had everything packed up and waiting by the door. She showed up as expected and started crying immediately when I came out with her stuff, trying to pull the bags to the ground so I'd have my hands free for a hug. I put the bags beside her car and asked her to check if I missed anything, which she refused. I agreed to a quick hug, told her to take care, and walked inside. My friend pulled the chair she was sitting in on my porch over so it was in front of my door, and told her she was calling the cops if she didn't leave. She did and I blocked her number again. I texted and called my son numerous times and left a voicemail telling him that we needed to talk, but first, he had to come clean to his girlfriend and accept responsibility for his actions. He didn't respond, so I called her myself. We chatted for a while, and she told me he was out with a friend. I asked if he had spoken to her about anything recently, and she said no. So I told her myself. Mostly because I felt it was the right thing to do, as she was a victim in this too, but I'll admit partially because he's a grown man now and needs to deal with the consequences. He showed up at my place that evening, and I let him in. I'm ashamed to say I wasn't nearly as calm as I hoped I'd be. He asked if ruining his relationship made me feel better, and I told him that he ruined it. Pretty much any hope of productive conversation went out the window and it became a screaming match, at which point I told him to get out and figure out how to deal with being as alone as I was. He slapped me in the head. This is a kid who never even threw a toy out of anger in childhood, who wasn't even spanked. As disgusting and twisted as it is, this exploded into a physical fight with me being struck in the face multiple times while trying to restrain him while trying to restrain him, as I didn't have it in me to hit him my son, very much not being a fighter, while in my younger years, I very much was until I took him off his feet and held him to the floor. I've never felt that level of rage before, how incredibly overwhelming it was. When I saw the fear on his face, I led him up and sat beside him on the floor. I told him to get out. He started crying and told me that his mother would be ashamed of him. This made me break down, pathetically so and realize how messed up this whole thing has been. I agreed that she'd be ashamed of both of us, and we hugged while he cried into my chest, something he hasn't done since my wife passed. He asked if it was too late to talk, and I told him it wasn't. I cleaned myself up, we sat at the kitchen table, and talked. He told me that he'd stopped therapy a while ago and lied about it because he felt it wasn't helping. He told me that he was hurt when I kept my girlfriend from him the first year because, although he knew it was to prevent him from getting attached if it didn't work out, he still felt excluded. It came out that he hid a very well-concealed alcohol problem from me, and even from his girlfriend. He told me he didn't sleep with her despite me, that he was just feeling lost and made a stupid choice. I asked him why he couldn't have been honest with me before it came to this, and he told me he didn't feel like he could be honest with himself anymore. We cried together again, prayed together despite neither of us being religious, and looked through family photo -fo albums together. We discussed the road forward, and we agreed that the loss we both felt went far deeper than we thought. We decided to attend therapy together. We're going to look into support groups, both for his drinking and other families dealing with loss. Now that he's without his girlfriend, and I'm aware of the extent of his issues, I agreed to let him move back home with me so I can make sure he attends his appointments and avoids alcohol. Hopefully we can bond again with the stipulation that any more violence, and he's out the door. He asked me if I can ever forgive him, and I told him honestly that I couldn't, but he's still my son, and I love him. And I reminded him of what his mother told him when he was a kid that everyone messes up, but it's what you do afterward that makes the difference. I'll never forgive what he did, but if he learns from this and becomes a better person, then I can forget it and have a great relationship with him regardless. Aside from the fact that my lip resembles the mouth of the vampires from Blade 2 for now, which has prompted concern from neighbors and friends, the past two days have been great. We've been talking, we cook dinner together, we've gone on walks, and we're set to start looking into professional help this coming week. He's incredibly apologetic and has a tenderness I haven't seen from him in years. I have no illusions about the amount of work to be done nor how serious this incident was, but I'm feeling very optimistic about the future. Thanks for watching till the end, wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share, I'd love to hear from you.